To see the connection between the real interest rate and planned investment, we now turn to investor behavior. To get his investment funded, an investor must pay the premium for deferred consumption to the saver. That is, he must pay the real interest rate. And he'll accept that cost if the investment's rate of return is higher than the real interest rate. We define the rate of return of an investment project as its net revenue as a percentage of its cost. So that an investment project is realized if... Notice that this is so even if the investor provides his own funding, since he'll only find an investment project attractive if its rate of return is higher than the real interest rate he can obtain on alternative investment projects. Now, here are the rates of return of eight investment projects. And here's a column indicating real interest rates from 0 to 14%. Clearly, if the real interest rate is 14%, none of the investment projects have rates of return that will make them profitable to realize. Assume now that we lower the interest rate. At a rate of 12%, Project A just breaks even. So at interest rates below 12%, Project A is profitable and will be realized. At 11% or lower, Project B as well becomes profitable. So both Project A and B are realized. And so on until even Project H is profitable and realized. The economy's total investment is the sum of the realized investment projects, and it appears that as the real interest rate increases, the sum of profitable investment projects, and thus the economy's planned investment, decreases, as indicated by this line, the investment function. We've now established theories of planned investment and planned savings. Also, we've seen that saving is deferred consumption and that saving is a precondition for investment. However, since savers only wish to defer consumption for a limited period of time, we can think of saving as a loan of claims on output from savers to investors. Thus, in practice, savers transfer money, that is, immediately redeemable claims on output to investors against securities, that is, against claims for repayment of loans. Thus, the transfer of resources from savers to investors is realized by loan transactions as savers supply and investors demand loanable funds. Notice that this is so even if the investor supplies his own funding. Only then, the saver-investor is the same person. The fact that investment is mirrored by the demand for loanable funds and saving is mirrored by the supply of loanable funds reflects on the saving investment diagrams, where LF for loanable funds substitute for saving and investment. Since demand and supply of loanable funds both depend on the real interest rate, we can aggregate the two diagrams into one single diagram for the market for loanable funds.